All right, so for this next problem, uh, this is like the second half of a completing the square type situation. So I keep grabbing the wrong stylus every day. Um, so let me write this down. We're asked to solve uh, the following. Um, they say that 13x uh, minus 7 squared is equal to 110. So this is a perfect square, and to undo a square, you take the square root. And whatever you do on one side, oops, when I got cut a little close, you got to do to the other side. And so this becomes just the base. When you take the square root of a square, these two kind of cancel each other out. And I'm just left with 13x minus 7 equals and remember, whenever we take the square root, it's plus or minus. So I'm going to say plus or minus the square root of 110. I'm going to add 7 to both sides. Now, 7 and the square root of 110, you can add them up, but it doesn't really help one way or the other. So we just kind of leave them separate. You can kind of think of them as like-like terms, but not. Essentially, I'd have to square 7, then take the square root of it. And I can't add it up, so it's just better just to leave it a 7 plus or minus the square root of 110 is equal to 13x. Over here, we're going to divide by 13 and do the same thing all the way over here. And so you get the solution is x is equal to 7 plus or minus the square root of 10, 110 all over 13. And that gets separated to the plus and minus part. So you could say x is equal to, let me slide over a little bit, 7 plus the square root of 110 all over 13. Or x is equal to 7 minus the square root of 110 all over 13. Now, a common mistake that, and I'm, I'm, this has nothing to do, so this is the answer. I, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit, but this is the answer. This stuff right here, that's the answer. I'm going to talk a little bit. People assume that plus and minus is, you know, like they'll do this one, and let's say you do the math on this, it's like, I don't know, negative 8.23, you know, or positive 8.23. So they don't do the math on this one and assume that it's just going to be the negative sign of whatever this one is. It's not. Because the plus or minus is inside between two numbers. So on the last test that we did that had the complex numbers, it seemed to me that people would solve for one solution and then just assume that the other solution was the exact opposite. In other words, if they got negative 2, then the other one was 2. No, do the math for both of them. You might have negative 2 and 7. You might have 5 and negative 4. I mean, you got to do the math all the way through. Now, you can plug this in a calculator and get a decimal approximation, but on the test, this is what they want. They want the exact value. Okay, that's it.